This episode is supported by MonsterJoysticks.com. Level up your Raspberry Pi with our all-in-one arcade kit using genuine Sanwa arcade parts. And OneClickPrint.com for your photos on canvas, acrylic, gifts and more. Local craftsmen and global delivery. Hello cave dwellers. <laughs> Hello cave dwellers, welcome to the cave for another show and tell episode. Today we've got a very special guest, it's Chris from... Games You Loved. And I think you've got a t-shirt on there, there as well. Okay. Um Chris, thank you for joining us and you've bought this incredible selection of tabletop games. All your own? All my own, yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, I am an offender of collecting tabletops and handhelds. Yeah, It's yeah. probably about um, 20% of the... Uh, Things that I've some of have kept over the years. Okay, so just twenty um, percent of your overall collection. I think here. so, yeah. And a lot of these games you have a very personal connection with because they are games that you bought at the time back in the day. Yeah, and there was a few here that uh, weirdly I've held on to. Yeah. Since uh, since I was many years ago. <laughs> yeah, we won't say how many. <laughs> say the age, but uh, yeah. Early why don't you 80s. give us a brief overview then of what's on the table Should and then stand we'll look up at some in more detail? Uh, why not stand yeah, up and okay. take us through some of them? So um, these two together almost, like Space Attack and uh, the Turning Turbo Dashboard. I think it was Christmas, it could have been 84 I got these. They've um, both got a similar kind of style of screen there, um, which you can probably see. And they work in a similar way as well with the rolling effect. Uh, it's very simple graphical uh, display. So these are not LCD or, or, or VFD or anything like that. It's just a, a plastic tube that rolls with a light in the middle. Um, yeah, exactly. Very, very simple, yeah. And that, and that uh, is also the problem as well. So this machine, uh, this doesn't roll at the moment, and this machine just um, is actually not working at all. Uh, but these are from Tomy, um, huge uh, creator of a lot of handheld games in the 80s. This is by Casio. So Casio actually made, um, this is not a table size, a handheld a number of games. I think I've got one called Kung Fu as well. Okay, this one's Submarine Battle. Submarine Battle, yeah. So this was a purchase probably around, um, I don't know, the late 90s. The actual um, unit was 1985. Casio really got into a lot of um, kind of game-related products. They did a lot of watches as well. Probably a lot of people owned a golf game on the watch or a, yeah. a Space Invaders style game. Um, so it's quite a nice little unit. Um, because Casio did so many calculators and watches, it's surprising you don't see more Casio LCD-based games. No, really. you don't, and they're quite rare as well to yeah. sort of come by. The most common is probably Caveman. Um, I just remember Toy Day at school, Game Day, whatever yeah. you called it. Everybody had <clears throat> about four of these used to turn up every year. Yeah. Um, so it's is, fairly is common. Is Caveman based on any particular video game? Not really, no. no it's just its own thing, and that's uh, that's by Grand. Oh, Grandstand, Grandstand. and Tommy. Yeah. yeah. So we were talking about this earlier, some, some of these games carry quite a few different um, licenses and also manufacturers as well. Mm-hmm. And this is a typical one, like you say. Into the Coleco tabletops, these were pretty much um, more c- common, should we say, in the US. Mm-hmm. They did obviously get released in the UK. They're part of a suite. So there's um, Donkey Kong, Miss Pac-Man, uh, there's Frogger, mm-hmm. and we have here Pac-Man and Galaga. So the, the, um, the kind of idea, the premise behind this is that they emulate the kind of design of a, an arcade cab. So yeah. you've got the side art, the side art of the um, actual arcade cabinet, which is pretty much like for like. Mm-hmm. Now the, the actual scaling is slightly different, but the, the actual um, design itself is mm-hmm. that of uh, you'd get on an arcade cab, which we'll kind of look at in a minute. Yeah. On this Pac-Man, because uh, you've got different game modes than you have on the arcade, yes, don't you? Yes, you do, yeah. Including a two-player co-op Pac-Man. That's right. Which is really cool. I don't mm. know why we haven't seen more co-op Pac-Man um, uh, on, on these older machines. And then there's also, what other games have you got in there? You've got Head to Head, it Head says. Head to Head, yeah. Uh, and Eat, Eat and, and Run, run. Mm. which is where you, it's just got the four power pills. That's right, yeah. And you've got to get all four power pills in one go uh, without getting eaten. Yeah. And, and with that, you've got two skill levels as well, yeah. which you can play around with. So this, probably out of all of them, got the most different um, variations of the game, yeah. Yeah. which, like you say, is kind of a bit of a one-off um, uh, with mm. Pac-Man. And, uh, obviously, into the modern Pac-Man, you, you've got all sorts of uh, variations. Mm. But very early game, this, so this is 1981. Which is only a year after the arcade. It is. So, so these are some of the nicer examples. Let's go the other way. What's... 
rubbish. What's what's one that you really don't like in your collection, but you've got it anyway? Okay, the game is rubbish. Obviously, let's just have a look at the uh, <laughs> yeah. the tiger. I suppose. Um, Let me hold that. You know, this was the camera. This, this is was the. Uh, this is the present that you never really wanted. And is it just this game, or does this represent all Tiger LCD games as being rubbish, do you think? So I'm slightly torn with Tiger, because um, I like the game aspect of them. The fact they had Double Dragon, Alter Beast, you know, I could go on. They had probably a, maybe 50-odd titles. Mm -hmm. But the game itself and the gameplay, I, I can't even begin to tell you how um, difficult it is to actually enjoy this game mm -hmm. uh, of any of their sort of titles. They're, they're very rudimentary in, in the way that they work. The was, reaction of the keys. Was it Tiger well. that did the Afterburner one and the Outrun one? Yeah, they did Afterburner yeah. and Out, Out, Outrun as yeah. well. Yeah, yeah. Um, any good, those two? No. Not really, no. 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 And this is the thing, almost like the better the game, the worse it can be because, yeah. um, you know, the experience you're getting on that sort of LCD Trying setup. Trying to translate a, a super scalar Sega game down yeah. to what is effectively like a calculator screen. Now, the next machine I want to look at is a very special one. It's Donkey Kong Jr. Can you tell us a bit about this one? Yeah, so almost start the largest first. This is a kind of um, the tabletop um, beast, if you want to call it, uh, released through CGL, um, but also did a, a number of other things with Nintendo. It pretty much emulates the original. Uh, it's a colour screen, um, very full colour in, in the respects of um, that kind of technology. Um, certainly wasn't a... Um, a screen like you'd see on an Atari Lynx or a, a Game sure. Gear, but for the time it was actually pretty advanced. And um, these things, uh, talking about rarity, they do uh, not come up so often. Mm -hmm. um, they're quite more difficult to get hold of. And this is part of a suite, I believe. I could be wrong here, there might be uh, four or six of these. Mm -hmm. I, I only have one of these. Um, partly because of the horrendous prices yeah, that they're going yeah. for. It was bought a, a number of years back, uh, I yeah. have to admit. This is CGL licensed from Nintendo. It is, mm -hmm. yeah. I think in the US it's uh, Coleco licensed from Nintendo. And there's that telltale sign there is Game & Watch. Yes. The Nintendo Game & Watch series. Which, is that the reason why it's so expensive to get hold of this one? I think it's just a whole Nintendo um, fandom, to be honest, that people um, all over the world are... Uh, into a, a, a game brand that's still about. We obviously still now have the Nintendo Switch, mm. and people want to buy into that heritage. They want to own something, perhaps part of their childhood, mm -hmm. or maybe not part of their childhood, because they have an interest in um, the hardware and the game itself. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's that little bit of um, attachment to that brand that you yeah. love. That's yeah. pretty much what why they're so difficult to get yeah. hold of. Yeah, and from this game and watch to these over here. But this was the um, pretty much my first foray into handheld gaming um, of, of a sort of proper description. Now, um, this one was my original um, Game & Watch. Um, just to tell you, it is the very, very first um, Game & Watch ever made. Not not off the production line. No, no, no. no. Um, but certainly... Um, this was the first game. It's called Ball. That's right. What did you have to do? It looks like some kind of juggler or something. Yeah, it's pretty basic. You're just literally juggling, uh, trying to keep the balls off the ground. Mm -hmm. And uh, see just a, a simple LCD screen, no colour involved. Um, this is released by uh, Computer Games Limited. That's what CGL, CGL yeah. stands for. Um, the, the company based in South Woodford in, in London, okay. um, probably a little side street um, that nobody knew about. Um, but we all cared about one thing, perhaps, and it was the game. The thing that these machines get, uh, I don't know if the light's going to show, is um, they get scratched a lot. I think kids used to just sort of throw them onto the yeah. table. To, I, I didn't, I sort of looked after mine. It's got a few little blemishes, but it's not too bad. But weirdly, don't get too weird, but it's that smell. <laughs> I'm gonna have to <laughs> snip smell, it. smell your game. It just has that plastic yeah. smell about it. It's kept for all these years. Please, I think it's sniffing old tech. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just particularly this one. It has that um, smell about it. I think Nintendo might just do this with many of their products to uh, to make them uh, sort of more more lovable, perhaps. That I don't know. Authentic Nintendo smell. That is actually spotless, isn't it? There's yeah. not a single mark on that. That's as new as the, as the day it was made. I think there's a thing about looking after, you know, what what, uh, what you have, and um, some people, have, you know, perhaps got into it more recently. But mm. I've always tried to, you know, take reasonable care of 
of uh, you know what are effectively uh, part of history, aren't they? We won't dwell any more on these, but I'll just show you quickly Donkey Kong Jr. there in the box, looking great, and Mario Cement Factory. That was a really fun one to play. I enjoyed Cement Factory. Yeah, that's that's probably one of the better games actually to yeah. play. Okay, loads more to look at, and there's one over here which I know is particularly special to you, and I love it because it's got this cute little steering wheel on the yes, front. Tell yes. us about that. I mean, this for me is probably one of my first pieces of gaming history. Right. Um, but it's uh, it sort of has a you know mechanical aspect to it as well. Uh -huh. Like a lot of these um, kind of late seventies, elect part electronic, part um, mechanical, mm -hmm. and it's a uh, Demon Driver by Tomy. It's kind of like a Night Driver style game, if you yeah, imagine that yeah. sort of thing. Um, Vectrex had a quite a good variation of it, obviously in the uh, in the screen there. Yeah. But this is seventy eight, so this is well before that. Seventy eight, wow. yeah. yeah. And uh, I've had this pretty much from from that point. So, mm -hmm. you know, this is now a forty year old game. I think yeah. personally, out of all of these, the most fluid gameplay is probably Tron. You think so? Yeah. 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 I'm amazed that it hasn't been emulated because it's quite a fun uh, game to actually just play on your phone or something like that. Mm. If you played it landscape, it could work really nicely. Mm. I mean, you don't necessarily need that particular technology to run it. Excellent. Um, one more machine over here. Which I really like. I think this is a great one to play. It's Astro Wars. Of course. Um, if I can just pop that in front of yeah, my camera sure. there, because um, to kind of enhance the experience, this one's actually got a magnified screen there. You can see the uh, uh, concave screen there, magnifying what's going on. And that's actually a really nice uh, Galaxian clone, is it? Yeah, it's Galaxian, yeah. similar, yeah. It's very loud, isn't it? It is Astro very Wars. loud. Even yes. now, the wife bangs on the ceiling <laughs> when I'm playing Astro Wars. <laughs> and I remember that happening when I was uh, very young. But it's, I don't know what's in there, a 5 watt speaker or something. Yeah. But it does crank up. It's and obviously, and it's no, also the display in it there is. is really bright, yeah. really nice, clear, and then magnified display. Now we're talking about all these things as if tabletop gaming is a thing of the past, but it's not because you've got something over here which has been sat the whole time and you're probably wondering what it is and you're going to show us what that is. So should we clear the table and yeah. have a good look at modern day tabletop gaming? Sounds good. Okay, let's do it. So check this out. This is obviously a Pac-Man cabinet and it looks like a very authentic looking cabinet. It's brand new. Is it even available yet? So this is a um, production prototype. Wow, okay. So it's a very, very, very early version. Um, it's not out yet, it's on pre-order. Okay. And it'll be out, as I'm told, the second week in December mm -hmm. from uh, Numskull Designs. Numskull Designs. Okay. And it's part of their range called Quarter Arcades. Okay. So is it exactly then quarter scale? You've got it in one. There's some really fine details on this. So. The things that impress me, like on the marquee, you've actually got the metal strip along there with the, with the screws. You've actually got what looks like the moulding down the front. Yeah, It would be very definitely. easy to ignore those details, but they all add to it. And then the artwork, you've got you know, the licensed official Pac-Man artwork there. And so then, the scale bit is very key. So you know, the screen isn't the odd uh, odd size. It's an exact size that will um, look if you put it like for like against an original. They're not making the screen big to make it right. play right. They're making the screen the right size for the actual overall size of a machine. Right. So there's no stretching. Exactly. Yeah. Of, yeah, yeah. And yeah. Proportions are very important. That joystick actually clicks. It's a four-way um, clicky joystick, yeah. It's oh, really nice. Emulate. So it's not moving about all over the place and sticking either. It looks like you might break it, but actually that's clicky and solid. That's nice. The coin buttons work? Yeah, so uh, the idea is, like the original, you kind of fire it up, the yeah. game, and then one player or two player. I'm just going to turn the volume up and we can hear the, uh, the credit noise that we all know. The 
game itself, um, it's uh, a bespoke emulator, so it's not Raspberry Pi. Right. Uh, they've worked with, um, they've got their own tech uh, department, I guess, who have created an emulator to run the original arcade ROM, mm -hmm. uh, which has been supplied by Namco. So this is a officially licensed product. The game obviously being officially licensed as well. So presumably now they've got the basics with with Pac-Man and got that working nicely. Is it easy enough to play different games and make different models of this, do you think? So I think the um, the idea that the guys have had is with quarter arcades is to bring out a suite mm -hmm. so you can create your own miniature arcade, mm -hmm. wherever it might be, at, you know, at home, in your office. Mm -hmm. And this is the first, like you say, um, released, um, I guess, second week of December. They're also about to release details for their next machine. So they've got Gallagher coming out. Okay. Is that an exclusive? Are we hearing it first? I think they've already <laughs> said it, but you, Gallagher it's, it's, okay. uh, it's pretty much going to be yeah out similar very era. Soon. Game. Yeah. Well, I really like the look of it, and um, I'm going to have a play on it now. Thank you for taking the time to bring Thank it you. to show us. Um, we're going to do something that we don't normally do at the end of show and tell. I'm going to give you lots of glamour shots now of the tabletop games. We'll get them back on the table so you can see them because you were probably screaming at us to show you some that we didn't pick up. So we're going to get lots of shots of those. Uh, some more shots of Pac-Man in action. I think we should turn the lights off and see that marquee. Oh, that'd be nice. We'll do that. Um, and yeah, keep us posted on the new models that are coming out. Just remind yeah. us where we can find you and where we can find this. So us, it's pretty simple. It's games you loved, all one word. And you can find us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and we do a little bit of YouTube okay. now and again. Um, and then Numskull Designs, it's just Numskull and Designs. And again, they're on all the all the channels as well. So. Excellent. Okay, I'll put all the links in the video description. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for coming. See you next Goodbye. time, cave dwellers. Take care.